We got a town, it seems to be. Reminds me of a place in Germany with a castle reaching into the bright blue sky. Now it's year 175. That new Broadfuls has been alive. So let's raise a glass. Everyone hold yours high. Oh, sweet down the mine. Oh, sweet down the mine. Water has been at the center of everything in New Braunfels. Long before German settlers arrived in Texas, Native American tribes inhabited the area because of its closeness to fresh spring water. The Comal Springs are the largest and most prolific groundwater source in the state of Texas. It was Prince Solms of Braunfels, Germany, that recognized the Comal Springs held great promise. After the Texas Revolution, a company run by German nobility called the Adelsverein set out to create German communities in the Texas Hill Country. In 1844, Prince Solms left behind a crowded Germany for the shores of Texas. He arrived at the Comal Springs and purchased the 1,265 acres of property along the Guadalupe River from the Veramendi family for $1,111. German families first landed in Galveston, Texas, prior to sailing on to the port of Indianola, where they spent a few months preparing for the journey north along the Indianola Trail. On Good Friday, March 21st, 1845, the Germans finally reached the banks of the Guadalupe River just six days after Prince Carl had purchased the property, marking the founding of New Braunfels. They crossed through the shallow waters beneath what is now the Faust Street Bridge and began establishing their new community. Dude, you did pretty good with this town. When you walk through New Braunfels, it's clear that this town's heritage is built into its very foundation. Throughout the spring of 1845, the settlers built a fort, divided land, and began building homes, planting crops, and raising livestock. A group of committed Germans, they had high aspirations to create and sustain an environment where everyone would thrive. While establishing commerce in New Braunfels was important, the Germans also made time for community fellowship. At the base of Sophienberg Hill, the first church was constructed. Logs from the original structure can today be seen inside of the first Protestant church, along with a stained glass window dedicated to Hermann Seely, who served as secretary of the church. Seely was the first teacher in New Braunfels and helped to create many of the first social activities, such as the Kinder Maskenball and the Germania Gesangverein, the first singing group in New Braunfels. So, the Germans had school, church, singing, and a shooting club? The Schützenverein was organized in 1849 and has grown tremendously over the years. With a primary focus on target shooting, the Schützenverein still holds regular shooting matches and is one of the oldest organizations of its type in the nation, with its classic Koenig match being held since before the Civil War. You know what else was popular? Bells. New Braunfels has a lot of bells. The bells in front of First Protestant Church were actually a gift from Prince Psalms. Bells were used to summon the volunteer fire department. They were used to signal incoming stagecoaches, the noon hour, the beginning and end of the workday, to announce the beginning and ending of church and school and as community alert systems. Many of the early bells are still around today, although only a few of them are used. Welcome to the city of New Braun Bells. It's our birthday. What a great day. We're living it up in the city of New Braun Bells. We're 175. And we've yet to arrive. Ah, uh, needs more Kamal bells. Mm -hmm. 
New Braunfels quickly became a corridor of commerce. General stores, pharmacies, hardware stores, newspapers, bakeries, meat markets, breweries, and saloons flourished. According to the 1866 census, there were 11 saloons operating here in New Braunfels. Next round's on me. The recreational fund came with the introduction of the railroad in 1880, which completely changed the industry of the town. A rail depot was constructed near Landa Park, and the park became a major destination. Trains still ride through, just a little smaller. While the rail cars were packed with new building materials, coal, agricultural products, and a few other necessities, it also transported people who wanted to come and visit New Braunfels, and thus the tourism industry was born. The railroad struck a deal with local New Braunfelsers to run special trains from San Antonio to Austin, bringing in trainloads of visitors to Landa Park and to the very first Comal County Fair. <laughs> While it began over 100 years ago, the Comal County Fair is still significant in the lives of residents, just like it was back in 1893. New Braunfelsers love their fair, and they also love parades. When you get a day off of school or work for a fair parade, you know it's a big deal. While attending the fair, exploring Landa Park, and drinking at saloons was fun, German nine-pin bowling also became a hit. The New Braunfels Social Club, built in 1910, was home to the first nine-pin bowling lanes in New Braunfels. The lanes still exist today and are used as part of the dance floor at what is now the New Braunfels Elks Lodge. Dancing was another great weekend activity that used to take place at the old Sanger Hall and eventually at another hall you might have heard of. In 1878, Ernst Green constructed a dance hall as a place for local cotton farmers to come and enjoy themselves. Children used to slide across the floor of Green Hall in their socks. Not a recommended activity nowadays. The Green family faced many challenges, but as you can see, it was rescued and is now a massive tourist destination. Offering food, fun, and loads of entertainment at Texas' oldest dance hall. Excuse me, do you know where the grist mill is? You're asking the wrong person. Sorry. Oh, my town, New Braunfels, it's your big birthday, year one, 75. Those rivers cry, float to me, float to me, to my Texas home of NB. If you were to head down the road from Green, you'd probably run into a few hundred people holding floating devices. Whether you are a resident of New Braunfels or have just heard of this town through word of mouth, you would know tubing is a big deal here in town. Hundreds of thousands of people visit each year to float our two rivers. The Comal River has been proclaimed by locals as the longest, shortest river in the world and is a tributary to the Guadalupe River. Fun fact, the tube chute is actually remnants of Clement's Dam, which was constructed in 1882. The same stones that were used to construct the Comal County Courthouse went into building this dam. Camp Warnicky was actually the first place to introduce inner tubes to float the river, and eventually became part of a water park that you might have heard of once or twice, Schlitterbahn. Schlitterbahn is not only a place for family fun, it is also a celebration of heritage. Many of the castles model that of the castle in Braunfels, Germany. While Schlitterbahn began with only one castle and four slides in 1979, the water park is now celebrating over 40 years of fun and has attained the title of the world's best water park destination. Swimming, dining, dancing, beers, live music, New Braunfels knows how to do things right. When you put all of those things together over the course of several days, you know what you get, a festival. 
new brothels, loves festivals. We've got wine and Sanger Fest, Wassel Fest, Folk Fest, Hill Country Craft Beer Festival, Green Wine and Music Fest, Dia de los Muertos. The list goes on and on. And then we have the Opa of all the fests, Worst Fest. I've been a few times. One of the most popular festivals in the nation, Wurstfest is a born and raised New Braunfels tradition that draws in thousands of visitors every year. It's a little hard to imagine, but at one point this festival was held in a basement. Six years later, the festival moved to what are now the Wurstfest grounds. The Worst Hall was originally built in the 1890s as the Landa Cotton Oil Company Cotton Seed Storage. Today, it serves as the largest music venue for the annual Salute to Sausage. This celebration of all things German includes carnival rides, sausage, Maskrugstemmen, music, dancing, and of course, beer. Let's see how much people really know about the town of New Braunfels, Wurstfest, and our German heritage. I'm just gonna ask you to pronounce a few German words. See what you've learned. Beer. Wine. Wei? Auf Wiederhausen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen sein. Auf Wiedersehen. Can you sing it for me, though? No. What's that? New Braunfels. You know there's only one S in New Braunfels. Is there? Carter Pluffer. Cardel Pluffer? Carter Puffier. Can you tell me how to pronounce this word? I must say, Worst Fest is the greatest 10 days in all of sausage history! Do y'all agree? Yeah! It's pretty clear New Braunfels has been home to a lot of success and fun over the years. We have festivals, a great downtown scene, surface clubs, museums, Natural Bridge Caverns, Natural Bridge Wildlife Ranch, Tubi, water parks, you name it, we've got it. The leaders and visionaries that crossed the river in 1845 established something that still exists and drives this community forward today. Love of where we live and an appreciation of all that New Braunfels has to offer. Here's to another 175 years New Braunfels Prost. Man, you're the schnitzel. Nice job, buddy. It's all you, man. You made this. Hey, have you ever had an Alex Meister polka pills?